Hello and welcome to After the Whistle. I don't know what it was today, Wednesday, June 19th. But before we get into the show, we got a clip to play for y'all. You know, the NBA Finals just ended, but y'all need to watch this clip real quick. Stand right here. You got six? I, I, I got five. You got five? I you got, got the four. sweep. I got six. You got six? Somebody got to say the sweep, I think. You got six? All right. Well, well, I, said, we're, I think we're this series is going five. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think this series is going five. Yeah. It's going five games because... I just, they still haven't lost on the road. Yeah. How many, Who how many you games you got going? I got it going six. Yeah, I going six. I got it going five. Same. Damn, you think Celtics is going to do it like that, huh? I just don't think the Mavs have enough. I agree. And if the Celtics play the Mavs the way they should, they would, they'll force the rest of them guys to do something. Sometimes y'all just got to listen to us. <laughs> the energy, man. It's the energy. <laughs> we just call it. We got Ant here with us. From Can- Ant is joining us My all the way from Canada. What is going on, Ant? Oh, he got it. That was good, man. A lot of hair, too, brother. You looking like me a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. How's everything going up there? Everything's good, man. Same old, same old, man. Grinding, grinding. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that. Definitely. You should be, sir. Definitely. It was all... Um, Saturday was the first official day colleges could actually contact players and offer them uh, scholarships and all that stuff. Like, why that. is that even a thing now? I don't know. That's, all that I should be just be wiped out. Like, yeah, you're getting paid, players are getting paid now, so you should be able to talk to them guys whenever you feel the need, bro. Like, yeah, what are we doing here? But, but yeah, they, it was like <laughs> they, still, they, still, they still have the they still have the live periods, man. I get it, but like, why bother? But yeah, there was, but right. a lot of, yeah, the, so the scholarship offers was going out this weekend. A lot of kids from Mass are getting, are getting a lot of looks. So they're getting actually offers and That's stuff dope, like that. Man. That's so, dope, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good time. Good, yeah, good time man. for Massachusetts high school hoops. Facts. Good time for national basketball in the, in the league. The Celtics. Celtics, they brought it home. To, to no surprise, me, we weren't surprised at all at, at this result. A lot of people were surprised. I don't know why. But I, I'm not gonna lie, this playoffs, I felt like an old person waiting for, like to leave the leave Earth. Like waiting just to go. Cause this playoffs, you see me the other night, I was like, bro, can this game have and get over, bro? Like this is like unfortunately I wasn't excited, even though we should be excited, but they were just so head and shoulders above everybody, like they they supposed to do this. I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. And Dallas kinda overachieved. They this year they overachieved, especially when they got that when the Nuggets got eliminated, it kinda wiggled their way. Especially when you only have two I mean, your primary score was a two players. Yeah. You know what I mean? The rest are kinda like spot up shooters and get you a little bit here and there. You don't really know what they're gonna give you each game. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, good yeah. thing though. Yeah, yeah, and what you what you think about this series? Um, yeah, I'm pretty much on the, like the same as you guys, man. Uh, da- da- Dallas kind of lucked out running into the young guys, Minnesota and uh, Oklahoma City, who probably like a year ahead of schedule both of those teams. So um, you know you can't you can't win not playing defense, and, and it's tough when <clears throat> uh, your two guys. Yeah, they score a lot, but it's uh, they don't score off each other. It's kind of like taking turns, right? Like one guy will take four or five shots, and the other guy standing in the corner and the, the, you know what I mean? Like, Luca take four or five shots with Kyrie watching. Then Kyrie will take his couple of shots with Luca watching. So I felt like against a team like the Celtics, who, like you said, were clearly better than everybody they played, there was no way that was going to work, man. And, uh, and it showed. Would you say with, like, Luca and Kyrie, that's kind of like what – and they, you know, granted, they finally figured it out, but that's kind of what, like, was hindering the Celtics for these couple, last couple of years with Tatum and Brown, that they, they didn't know how to play off each other or score off each other, and they kind of they started figuring it out this, this year pretty much? Um, I mean, yeah, for the most part. I mean, I'm, me, I'm a firm believer that Tatum and, and, and Brown are the same player. Like, they're literally the same guy, do the same things, same position. For me, uh Tatum might shoot a little more, but they kind of they kind of are the same player to me. So I always thought that was a problem. But yeah, I mean, it could have just been like they were playing basically one on one basketball when they were both on the court, and they figured out how to play with each other. And they have a great, great, great team. And there's a lot of guys on that team that come in the game and, and do something, right? Like they do something. Everybody that comes in the game. So I mean, I, that, that helps too. You know, like neither one of them had like great three-point shooting percentages or anything like that, right? But they didn't have to because they have so many guys that uh, that pitch in. 
And as, as Mook likes to call my main man Holiday, the adult in the room. <laughs> Because I'll be honest, <laughs> yeah. Without Holiday, I don't think they win. No. And like he just, he does he defensively. He makes the, he makes easy shots, easy plays, mm-hmm. simple layups, yeah. offensive rebounds. He does everything that the rest of them guys don't want to do. Yeah. And back, and, go, and going off what you just said about Brown, Brown and Tatum kind of being the same player. Holiday and White, they're almost like similar players that do, so that do kind of similar things, but just like in a different way. Because like the way yeah, Holiday does, yeah. But no, I think I think in a sense where where like Todd was just saying, as far as like they do a little bit of everything. Like Derek White might 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 be second in blocks besides Porzingis on the team for the season, right? Like so, like in in that sense, maybe. But they're different, right? Like Derek White's. He's a shooter, like, you know, uh, 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 Drew can't really shoot it like that. Drew will post up. Derek White's not going to – like, so they, they they rebound and defend and do those things the same, but they're different players for sure. Catches you off guard because you don't really expect your your guards to rebound that way yeah. or to go in the post, post people up. So, yeah. like, his his game has always been unorthodox to me. That's why I liked it, and yeah. it showed. And it I, shows. Think, I think what also throws people off is he's really athletic and kind of he doesn't show it all the time, but then there'll be a point where he just – He's going up. You think he's going for a layup, and then he put you end up on the poster, and you just like a <laughs> lot, lot, lot stronger than he looks. <laughs> right, right. Once again, very unorthodox, bro. Yeah. Very unorthodox. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then to make that, just like the overall team. I mean, Sam Hauser, the last round, he did not have the best game, like the best series against the Pacers. I, I think he made one shot that whole that whole series, and then this series, he, he was the he. I think he was the. I mean, Porzingis led led them to scoring a couple of times, but he was making some big shots. In, the, in this, uh, in the like, especially on the road. Yeah, man. I mean, that's what we've been asking him to do. Mm. He just stepped into the plate, man. That's all. In order to win a chip, you need some of your role players to do some things that are kind of outside themselves. And yeah, he came to play, yeah. man. Yeah, Hauser, Pritchard, all those guys. They step in, and like I said, they they all do something. Yeah, yeah. This plan, like this championship was like when you look back at it, it was like ten years in the making because it started it started off with that KG Paul Pierce trade. And then all these other moves they made, but it was kind of like it was pretty much ten years in the making. And you kept getting close, kept getting close, and then they had to tweak that lineup. And you know they had to trade Smart, had to trade Brogdon, traded some draft picks, and you know found found the recipe that they needed to finally make it work. Nah, definitely. I remember. Um, I think Paul Pierce or KG one of them said it years ago, like we're doing this for the future. So you know yeah. it worked out. It worked out. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want, I don't think they yeah. both wanted to leave the Celts. No. There was a reason why they left and then, like, yeah. based on how the Celts could win out of the, out of the trade. So they yeah. said, why not? And then it was just like, there's this, like, the last couple years in the league, too. Like, whatever. Take some of this money and chill out and retire. Uh, uh, not the best of series for Kyrie or Luka, like, the last couple games. And it, it, it just shows you how much work you need and how much help you need in order to um, to win a title because, yeah, Luka's so ball dominant, but it's just he got so exposed on the defensive side of the ball. Like, just, then, they, he got exposed on the defensive side of the ball, but, I, I mean, I, don't, I really – Minnesota, Oklahoma City, like, they don't play – like, Boston plays defense, man. Like, it's different. They have guy like Drew Holiday's and the Derek Whites. They have guy designated to like just dog you all game, man. Like Luca couldn't get the ball over half court sometimes, man. Like it was it was it was ridiculous. I, like they haven't they haven't seen defense like that, and I don't think it was like Finals D or playoffs D. I think I think that's just Boston defense. Boston's like been a great defensive team all year, and it was just it was just something they couldn't handle. They haven't seen defense like that, man, and it's just nothing they could do. And I was telling so people too. It's all one on one basketball for them too. Definitely. So. And I was telling folks if even if they ended up playing like the people saying Minnesota would have gave the Celtics a better series, I'm like, I, Minnesota would have got swept if, nah, if they got smoked. Yeah, it would. It would. Yeah. <laughs> it would it, would not have been close. Now, if I were to say what, what type of defense they played, I would say like college defense, just all up in you. Oh, yeah, like yeah. in. Derek and um, Holiday were able to help off. If you notice, right. sometimes you see Holiday just roaming, like just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like just roaming. So like the way they, yeah, man, it was just their five plays, understanding rotations, and just yeah, have, he would he would leave his guy and just like run up behind Luca and like steal it. 
<laughs> and, and these dudes, and they only cracked 100 points once. And I and I firmly believe that game, the Celtics just threw that game. Bro, well, did I they? Mean, nah, nah, there's a way. Oh, yeah. nah, nah, there's a way you go. There's yeah. a way you go about losing and you want to win it at home. But yeah. they just said like, all right, who cares, bro? Yeah. Like, after, come on, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> after like after they went on that run in that to get a double digit lead, they just they just threw that game. So it's kind of like. <laughs> Minus that one, they, they couldn't crack 100 points when they was really focused. Hey, man, I, and, yeah. and Kyrie just had a, he's had a rough series coming back to Boston. Yo. Yeah, I, I, no. I wish he would have played better, but I don't know what happened. You know, I'm not, a su- you know I'm not that superstitious. I'm a little superstitious. Nah, I, I feel you on that, too, But bro. that curse of the leprechaun, that thing, <laughs> yo, it's ri- Yeah, because he was falling, he was falling all over the place. He yo. was doing stuff that wasn't like him. He hasn't played well. At TD Garden since stepping on the logo. Oh, uh, they were they were tracking it. It said he's like, oh, and like 14 or something since uh, since stepping on the le- leprechaun. I'm just like, hey. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Kudos to the Celtics, though. Yeah. Kudos to the Celtics. Um, Parade Friday. The biggest winner. I'm Tatum and Brown are the biggest winner, but Brown I think is the biggest winner of these finals. He got the Finals MVP. But just look at the offseason he had and how he was so ridiculed. You said you said look at the what he had. I see last year. You know how badly it ended last year, Game Seven against the Heat, where he was just he played probably the worst game of his life, and all the yeah. criticism he got, and then um, scrutinized most of the offseason, got the big contract. He's a guy. He and he's he stepped up in every in every way and actually improved all the flaws the flaws that he had in his game. Yeah, no, he had a, he had a good year. I, I don't think he should have won the final. I think Tatum should have won the Finals MVP, but he had a good year for sure. I mean, stats-wise, we all know Tatum should have won it. I think it's just how he looks, how he played. He's just, like, ultra-aggressive, mm-hmm. and it looked like Brown was going off. Mm-hmm. Just just visually I mean, dunking, that, that, dunking that, on that, people that, every that, game. That's, that's, that sounds good, but I don't know. what that, I really don't know what that means. It looked like he was going off. All Everything everything else points to Tatum. Like, I don't mm-hmm. understand. Now, you know I agree, but I'm yeah, just saying, like the, like, the aesthetics of it, him dunking on somebody almost every game, yeah. just – being more entertaining. We already know Tatum's the guy. He's the man on the team automatically. So, like, yeah, I thought they should have gave the Finals MVP to Tatum as well. Uh, that'd be but just, just for how things looked. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't understand why they gave Tatum a hard time for being yeah, like he that. Averaged, he, averaged, he averaged more points. He averaged more rebounds. He averaged more assists. He, like, I don't know. Like, I, you know, I don't know what they want, you know, so. Brown, and it was like they both they both didn't shoot well from three and stuff like that. So nah, nah, both shots hurt both yeah. yeah, so it wasn't like there was one thing that he did better. And then the series 22 7 and 7 compared to 25 and 5. That's obvious. Yeah, yeah. It's obvious. <laughs> yeah, so finals MVP voting is always weird, anyways. I mean, they gave it to Iggy for, you know, holding LeBron to like 28 points. <laughs> Pretty, right? <laughs> the light 28 points. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, yeah, so the voting is weird. And I know some of the people that voted, too. I, just, I, was like, <laughs> I don't get how y'all was doing that. Um, and then you got Tatum. He, he, he joined, like, four or five other players. I think it was Matt, um, Magic, Jokic, uh, LeBron, uh, Hakeem as, like, the only players to lead their teams in points, rebounds, assists in an in a NBA Finals win in – and this guy, and he's, I, I don't, I don't get the Tatum hate. I don't get it. I, I get the criticism sometimes, but like just like the pure Tatum hate that he nah, received. The hate was necessary, but very like, weird. The criticism we understand, but like yeah. he's not even type of player to even hate. He don't yeah. do anything. <laughs> he's chill, like respectful. Like he don't, he don't get to anything. Like he yeah. just plays basketball. He just plays win. basketball and take care of his son. <laughs> got his son at every game. <laughs> I, I, I honestly didn't know he was getting criticism and hate like that because I don't know how you could criticize or hate him and not give it the same way to like Luca or like a Dame, that a Dame. Oh, like, I agree. Right. But yeah, people out here, man, they're weird, bro. Right. They're weird. Right, right. They, they, <laughs> like Joel. Well, that's, that's, just a, that's just a Boston thing. That's a Boston fan thing. <laughs> Yeah, oh. for the most part, man. You know, you you know, spoil these people out here, man. Yeah, <laughs> very very spoil. <laughs> it was national media too. It was like they still like. I mean, Joel Embiid's the biggest. Give me he's the biggest that. person that kind of like people just brush aside and like don't say nothing about his flaws. Like you, your MVP can't. Your MVP and you ain't making it out the second round. Nobody ever. expects him to win. He got all skills in the world, but his team. Nobody expects his team to win. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. I think that's true. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a shame too. It is a shame, but that's probably more on uh, uh, what's his name than him. What's Buddy's name over there? I don't even know his name. Tobias. <laughs> Talk about <laughs> to Tobias Harris. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nah, a, man, I, I a, man, a man stealing all that money can't even score man. can't score in the finals that's a, that's a shame but um but yeah shout out to the Celtics answered all their critics I mean silence them for now they're gonna you know they're gonna say yeah, you guys hold them off for a couple years hold them off until the next season because they're gonna be like they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna say you guys didn't beat a healthy team any healthy team but one and they're like Bro, they was, bro, they was, they, they was stomping on everybody all season long, bro. Like, you serious? Come on. Yeah, even, even when people say like, it was a boring final, I mean, like, what do you want them to do? They're better than everybody. You want them to, like, play close games for no reason? Like, did play close games against the against the Pacers. They got criticized for that. Like, you should be blowing these guys out. They should be blowing them out. Right, man. so it was kind of like them dudes can't win at all. Like, nope. What do you want nope. from them? <laughs> that, was, that was pretty hilarious, but, yeah. Parade is Friday. Friday at 11 a.m. I think I'm going to miss it. I got training. What? I got training. You catch me outside. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> yeah, there's some other NBA news that happened before we get out of here. Um, Marty Williams got fired just after one year. With he's Detroit? Still, yeah, he still owed $65 million. I think he was play, he was the, he got the highest contract for a head coach signing with the Pistons last year. And Bro, they did him a favor. Fun fact, the Celtics were more play. <laughs> Celtics, Celtics, 16 wins in the postseason. Pistons, 14 wins all Bro, year. Yo, know, you know how bad to feel with him with them press conference? He had to, like, try to think of something to say. Like, man, I'm glad he got fired, man. Get your money, bro. Go somewhere else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Luca, bro, it's Luca's fault. It's Luca's fault. Oh. Remember what he did to the Suns in Game Seven? That pretty much broke that franchise. They ain't been the same since. Since then. It's, it's, but 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 Detroit basically shot themselves in the foot. You got hire man, fire him. You still owe that man all that yeah, money. You still, and and they don't help you. And they and Detroit. They don't help each other. They don't help him or the coach with some of the picks they've got. And we know. Some of, Shout out some, to Monty Williams getting that bread, Some man. of the players they, they've brought in there as well, too. I mean, shoot. Uh, your, your, your top pick, Kate Cunningham, he's kind of been injury prone and he's still trying to figure it out. Got a young roster. I don't even know who's on Detroit. Bro. Me either. I know Cade, though. I know Cade and... Um, Duran, right? He's still there? Duran. Who the dude that played for Memphis? That's Duran. No, no, no. The other dude that played for Memphis for like three games. Lefty. Big man. He was on Golden State. Owls and stuff. No, I'm, I'm saying I can't hear crickets and all that. I ain't I got nothing for you, brother. I forgot his name. <laughs> none, none of us got nothing for you, brother. <laughs> Where the sound effects at, Pedro? <laughs> Wiseman, Wiseman, Wiseman. Oh, <laughs> Wiseman. Damn. Wow, how did you forget about him? He's supposed to be something. He's damn. supposed to be the next big thing, too. What happened to him? He wasn't ready for the league, mature. He wasn't, you know, these dudes come in young, and sometimes they're not mature enough to handle the he, league. He came in hurt, too. Yeah, yeah. But you get buried, though? Like, yeah. Damn, we might not see him ever again. No, no, you, st you still might, because there's a lot, like, reading and reading some stuff, there's a lot of GMs that still got, that still got some faith in him. So, so he got, like, a three, four year. He got like, another, yeah, and he's only, like, 21. But you know how this league is, bro. <sighs> yeah. You ain't got that much leg room. Yeah, yeah, but just saying. Yeah, shout out to Monty Williams, sixty-eight million dollars, <laughs> sixty-five million dollars to just be at home with your family. Stay home, Dad. Hey, man. Why not, right? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got uh, <laughs> Hey, shout out to um, Chase, uh, Chris, Chris. Uh, no, nah, I met so I met a parent at um, the Shriners game over the weekend. You know, sometimes when I see parents and I'm filming, you know, they tell me about their kid, and sometimes I want to see it for sure. I don't want you hyping him up this is just because he's your kid, but nah, his son's actually the real deal. His, his son, like, went off at the Shriners game for, like, close to 200 yards receiving and stuff like How, that. What's his name, dude? My guy, dude. What's his name, little brother? Running back. From PBDI. 
Oh, uh, Eli? Yeah, Eli. Yeah, I forgot his name, That's bro. A, uh, Eli, he caught a touchdown. He okay. caught a touchdown. He caught a touchdown. Right. He caught a touchdown. Right. He caught right. Where he going? Bentley. Bentley? Yeah, right. yeah. He's going to be right. playing again this game next week. We gonna go to we gonna go to <laughs> athletes corner. We got we got the fellas from Salem State <laughs> Salem State University. We got them. So check this out. Then we gonna come back, talk some more sports sports update and all that. What what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. And today we got the gentlemen of Salem State University. I got a man Nelson here. What's up, Nelson? Hey, he always laughing. We got Will here. And we got Omri here, man. What is going on, fellas? Not much, not much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank y'all for coming through. It's, it's hot out there, so. I know y'all should y'all rather be at the beach right now. Yeah, stuff like that. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, nope. yeah. It'd be like that though. Honestly, nah, I'd rather yeah, be here with you, Makala. Hey man. I saw you on Sunday. <laughs> I saw you Sunday trying to keep your team in it. Just y'all got tired. Thanks. Yeah, they got it. Yeah, I could have subbed in. There was no subs. I could have subbed. I could have subbed in for y'all. I had, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had a good, I had a good 10, 15 minutes. Of, That's what we needed, man. That's what we needed. Yeah, yeah. I could give some fouls, you know what I mean? Make a couple layups. That's all. Y'all only lost by like five. Something like that. It's it's, it's all good. It's it, it's all good. Uh, but shoot, uh, first year of college, complete. What year is this for you, Will? Uh sophomore year. Sophomore year. sophomore year complete. I mean. Talk, tell me the difference first year and second year for you. Uh, you take less general classes, <laughs> you got to more, I guess. You got to try to figure out what you want to do with your life. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you kind of like, you know, because that first year, like the first month of college, I, I, I always say like the first month is just kids just trying to figure out the routine and, you know, getting adjusted to the class and stuff like that. But then what was like year two that you kind of just like have a, have a general idea of what you was doing and not, you know. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I take more online classes, so it's kind of easier for me so I can balance everything with my home life, school, basketball. So it gives me the time to do, like, classes whenever I want, yeah. uh, work whenever I want. Yeah, they offer more online classes than they do when I was Yeah, there. they and, do. Yeah. Helps out. You, pr you prefer the online yeah. over the in-person? Definitely. Why? Ooh, Why? Because it's easier. I like the in-person. I, I got more time to do what I want. I like the in-person. I can't. I, I mean, I can, but it's like I'd rather do online. The, uh, it's way better for me. Well, you seem like you're anti-social. <laughs> <laughs> you're an you introvert? I do my thing. You're an introvert? I, I stay with the mix. I hear you. I hear you. For Nelson and Omri, uh, year one complete for you. Uh, just the adjustment from high school to college. You know, high school, you got the set schedule. You know what time you got to be at school. You know what classes you have scheduled and stuff like that. But for college, you got to pick your, t your classes and all that other stuff. But how was it year one for you guys just getting adjusted to all that, the college routine? Um, for me, it was like really difficult because like it was mostly like the majors and stuff that I wanted to do. Like I chose business at first, but like I didn't like really like it. It felt like really easy for me. So like I had to like change like quickly, like in the second semester for like computer science, which was like really good for me more than business. Okay. But everything else, like basketball side of that, like that went so great for us, but like we just had like much more to do. Afterwards. Yeah, more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah, how about you, Ami? Uh, a whole bunch of stuff, to be honest. At first, it was a little confusing <clears throat> figuring out classes and stuff. But mm -hmm. once I got that down pat, it wasn't too hard. I mean, there is a difference in high school because high school you do have your set schedule. You like yeah. you have the assignments right in front of you. Whereas college, like. If you want to skip a class, unfortunately, you can skip a class. <laughs> you got like, three. Like, that's the issue, exactly. You have three. <laughs> that's the thing. That Like, at first, I was kind of, ah, ah, whatever, right? But then once the season started, not even the season, the semester started to close, it was really had to lock in and pay attention. Yeah. But, um, yeah. My advice to so you kids going to college, you get three skip you get three skip days. Go to all your classes, bro. Don't skip anything. Do all the assignments. Skip too. at the end of the semester. <laughs> skip towards the end. Use those skip days towards the end. They're kind of like PTO at a job. Use those towards the end. Just my advice, because that's all I did. Yeah, until you get those finals, bro. Those and finals are no joke. <laughs> that's, why you sure that's why you gotta make sure your that's why you gotta make sure your grades. <laughs> you gotta make sure your grade is like at a like a 
in the 80, in the 80s range. You, you got, uh, if you got a 70 average, yeah, don't skip. Go all your classes, yeah. bro. If you got a, like an 85 and up, you good. You good. Uh, uh, Basketball-wise, uh, you know, I'll get to you guys first. Uh, first year playing college basketball, uh, obviously there's some adjustments to make, go from starting to being a role, role player and kind of starting over again. I mean, so how was just, just that, you know, with the change, you know, you coming from the program you came from, you coming from the program you came from, and now you have to adjust a whole new program? Um, honestly, getting, well, once the season started, getting into that flow of the game wasn't too hard, but then, unfortunately, I got hurt, mm. which kind of set me back a little bit, and I rushed my injury, so that, that's another thing. Don't rush injuries, bro. Just let that, let it heal. But, um, honestly, it, was, it wasn't too bad. Picking up the, the speed of the game was a little bit different, just because high school is all back and forth. It's mm. all rapid, real fast, but, um, College basketball, honestly, I think it's a lot slower, but people are a lot more athletic. People mm. are faster, so they can close that gap quicker. So, you know, so um, when, once I got that down, it, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. I'm excited for next season, too. Definitely. How about you, Nelson? It was actually, like, it was really good, like, learning from Will, like, the other players that was with us last year. Like, learning from them, from their experience from the past, like, four years mm -hmm. playing basketball at Salem State. It was really, like, it was really good for us just like learn from them, especially the bigs that I'm like playing with yeah. and like versing like the other bigs from like other colleges. Like I'm just learning from them as well, like how they play. So like it's mostly like this year, I feel like I'll be much better. The whole team's going to do much better. I was like, you got to play against Josh, right? Yeah. You guys played against. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> How's that? You guys go from teammates now. You guys are opponents. Uh, and then Jalen, you you, know, you play. Yeah, with, play Jalen. You got to play against though. Uh, can you both just tell me those those two experiences for you guys. Bro, Jalen, he came in the game and he, <laughs> he told he told Babs before that he was gonna hit. Um, I want to say he said six threes. I think he ended up hitting seven. I think I was at, was, this was a game at Endicott. Yeah, I think it was, I was something that like game. that, bro. He was like, pass, I got five, six feet, whatever he said. And he did that. But, I mean, it was, it was cool. Just kind of, I know Jalen, like, pretty much my whole life. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's like my big brother type. So, it was cool playing against him. Dope, dope, dope. Josh is just, oh. <laughs> Josh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was killing? Yeah, he was he was killing us. Well, he was killing. He was mostly killing me, but <laughs> like it was mostly just oh they passed him in the paint. He would do his his thing his signature spin. Yeah, a little so pump like, fake. Uh, yeah, spin. pump fake signature spins like inside the paint. It would mostly always get me, but like I mostly knew how to like stop it, but he was just a he was just stronger than me. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> well, for you, I mean, was it, I mean, playing with your brother again, having your brother on the team uh, from high school to, to yeah. college and stuff like how just how how dope is that for you for you to you know once again share the court with him and like for your parents to see you guys on the same team again? Yeah, it's really cool. Even though we might not have met it all the time, we like playing with each other. <laughs> we have good chemistry from when we were on the court together. So. It's fun playing with him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he went through that injury. Yeah. And he, uh, that, and that, that ended his season, right? Yeah, he was done after, like, uh, I think eight games. Yeah, yeah that was at that same Endicott end game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was there. I was, I, 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 I was there. Uh, how, how did you help him, like, kind of get adjusted to the college game? Uh, he, he didn't need, need to adjust. Much. Yeah. He's that good. Oh, okay. You would know. You you you, you would know. For you, uh, the dif differences between year one and year two for you for you on, uh, on the court. Yeah, year one was more of a learning experience. I didn't really see the court that much. I was kind of just taking it all in, uh, looking what the older guys were doing. Year two, I was kind of thrown into the fire. When Nick got hurt, I started. So, mm -hmm. my went from like eight ten minutes a game to like forty. So, I really had to get used to it fast. Um, I made a lot of mistakes, but it's just part of the game. Yeah. Just got to grow for next year. Yeah, and you had those kind of sort of some of those older guys too that that were that been there. How how were they able to just help you, um, you know, just on the court and stuff like that when when you needed it? Uh, yeah, they were always they always got my back. They could put my shots. Don't worry about it. Next play, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what do you think kind of like the the team is gonna need for next year to try to get into the tournament and all that? Uh, we need winners, people who just give everything to win. It doesn't matter who scores, doesn't matter who does what, as long as you win. Yeah. And, and when you got, you, for you guys to have access to like the gym 24-7, because in high school, 
you don't really get access to the gym like that. Um, how beneficial is, is that for you guys? You guys have that access to the gym whenever you want to, or whenever you need it. Um, how beneficial has that, has that, was that, or has been? Uh, I think, I, I mean, I, I have light so so I always yeah. have the gym. But I think it was cool just to get out, like, when I wanted to on the bigger court and, like, get the get adjusted to the three. That, that was probably one of the hardest things was figuring out that range and yeah. being able to consistently uh, hit that mark. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, were you out mm -hmm. doing no, some somebody. extracurricular you were just activities? Talking about how you're using the shooting machine, bro. <laughs> the broken shooting machine. Come on, no, <laughs> well, like, thank you. Me right now is just like trying to like get better at my shooting, like on the court, like trying to like change my position from center to like forward at least. Yeah. Like get to like develop much more, like become better. Like, at least try to take his part. <laughs> Were you able to get, um, did you do more like mid range? Did you get more mid range shots in games? Or, or nah, because at English, you were more so just the, on cleanup duties, and you a, a lot of your points came inside the paint and layups and all that. But were you were you able to expand a little bit, or is that just something that you're gonna, that's going to happen next year? Um, it's most likely going to happen next mm -hmm. year. But like last year, it was like, I it was mostly still like cleanup duty, but mm -hmm. it was like, Oh, like they still let me like take shots, but okay. I wasn't like like so sure of like taking the shots. Nah, so okay. right. so I'll mostly just pass it back. Oh, I'll just do cleanup duty again. Yeah. But this year I'm most likely gonna have the confidence to like shoot more. Okay, good. Okay, okay, okay. You guys getting Edric coming over there. He got got a couple guys <laughs> coming coming over there. Um, well, what's the biggest advice you would give to the? incoming freshmen about you know trying to make it on a college team just play be confident um i mean that's all basketball really is just confidence like edrick's not bad yeah <laughs> he's a yeah, edrick's a fresh he just bro, graduated he just high school bro. <laughs> bro what continue man <laughs> bro you think he's about to graduate to a sophomore <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But yeah, just confidence. I mean, that's all you really need. Edric, Edric has skill. I mean, he's a big dude. As long as you can just play it how you know you can play, then you'll be all right. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought he'd transfer here. But. You thought? <laughs> <laughs> he literally got graduation photos up from last. From like, like what, I bro? I was just talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Nelson be in his own world. I think Melo's coming over there too. <laughs> Thanks, Nelson lives in his own world. Yeah, he does. He does. That's all right, though. I told you, he used to just walk to school like at 10:30. School's like. I'm trying to pop up the plane in Nelson. No such thing as plane in Nelson. Oh my gosh, man, we got it, hey, man. Thank you guys for coming through, man. <laughs> Had a blast. Uh, anything y'all want to plug in before we go? I mean, if y'all want to catch Army play, make sure you go to the gardens every Sunday. <laughs> On Sundays, I don't know the, the the schedule changes, but they play Sundays. You should invite me, bro. What? I'll, I'll dunk on them. Are you crazy? It's a men's league, bro. You could come. I am a man. On that note, you guys, you guys been you guys been watching Athletes Corner. We're out of here, man. This dude here, man. <laughs> We back. What up? We back. <laughs> Deandra's in the building. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> in, in the building. We got, I mean, maybe you slide that over if you want. Yeah, you want? Uh, to, you want? All uh, right. Oh, yeah. Uh, right there. Yeah. Yo, um, <laughs> there was the. Yo, there was the elite, the showcase yesterday at Marshall. You know, we had they had all the kids and stuff like that over there. Um, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. Games, games gonna be up on YouTube. It's up on YouTube. Uh, just watch the first two games. The college game, the college game, not so much. You know what I mean? The, the, the college game wasn't. But the first two games, like I said, Zay he went off for like 39. Okay, okay. Yeah, Brace was, he was doing his thing, right. blocking, That's going dope. to the basket, That's dunking, dope. dunking everything. Mello, I don't know what Mello was on, but geez, Louise, <laughs> Mello. Into it, man. I ain't never seen him shoot like that. I mean, he got glasses on. He got nah, he on. didn't have his glasses on. Contacts? Nothing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Melo like blind if you don't know it. Like, Melo can't see nothing. <laughs> yeah, he can't see. The first, his first year on varsity, his sophomore year, yeah, his first year on varsity, 
I, he he couldn't make a shot. Then one game he got he had on goggles and he just couldn't miss. So I'm, and he told me like he wears glasses for real. And I'm just like, why why haven't you been doing this? So. Kids are a little different, man. <laughs> man, them kids special. <laughs> oh, I'll let you say it. No, you know, they're special. They, they, man. You know, I was around them all the time. They, yep. yeah, this is, <laughs> special. Uh, we got Stanley Cup update for y'all real quick before we get into some other stuff. Uh, that, shoot, I think it's a 3-1 series. 3-2. Yeah, it's a 3-2 series. Florida, Florida was up 3-0. They dropped the last two games. So Edmonton avoiding the sweep. Got a chance to force a game seven. That'd be fun, kind of funny. Bro, my brain's always going to be puzzled by Florida winning the Stanley Cup, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's always going to be puzzled, bro. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I don't, like, I don't, what? I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame your dad. So, yeah, they got game game uh, six coming up Friday. So, yeah, that's still going on. Um, Red Sox update for y'all. They're still mid. They're still a mid team. <laughs> they're, they're 39 and 35 right now. But, but on the bright side, the bright side over the weekend, they took two out of three against the Phillies and took two out of three against the Yankees, the two best teams in each each league. So there's a ray of hope right there. And they they won the last the last four games. So they um, they beat they beat Toronto Blue Jays the last two the last two nights. So, but my, my, my opinion on the Red Sox, if we're not like killing from jump, we, we, we're aiming for the wild card, bro. Well, as I look at the standings, the Yankees are 51 and 24, Baltimore's 47 and 25, and the Red Sox are 39 and 35. Oh, man, fight for it. <laughs> Aim for the red wild card. <laughs> One of them years. <laughs> you know Papabon's still in the league? Huh? Yeah, really? Jonathan Papa. He was fighting his teammate the other day. Did he win? They broke it up. Oh, come on. You got to see him. He was fighting fight. Bryce Harper. Oh no, you gotta see a victor out of that one. Yeah, they was fighting. Oh, you, you, you can't have Bryce getting hurt though. He's a money No, you can't. So, yeah, right, you break yeah, that he up. was Back. mad because he didn't uh, run to the first base after a fly out. Like he knew he was gonna get out, but he got mad at him for not running the first base. So then the pushing and shoving happened. That it was deeper than that. Yeah, I thought that was icing on the cake. I didn't know Papelbon was still in the league. Me either. Oh, yeah. But that was definitely icing on, that was definitely icing on the cake because that's not something to fight somebody over. It, it so, really yeah, is. That, that, that's been going. That's something been going on in practice and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quick NFL news: Trevor Lawrence got a new contract. Well, this, well, I mean, two hundred seventy-five million dollars. Right about, just right they're about they're, five years. They're no longer the maggots in the bottom of the barrel anymore. Yeah. You know, they're like the you know the paper trash, right above the banana. You know. They're they making their way up the barrel. <laughs> Yo, after the debacle, what, what was it, last year, right? Yeah. The little debacle they had. Yeah. They're, they're not at the complete bottom, but they in the middle. <laughs> so, the, so the contract, $200 million guaranteed. You got like 142 in like signing bonuses or whatever, like incentives and stuff like that. But that team, yeah, they went from, they had high hopes last year, and they just didn't live up to the, the hopes at all. And so... <laughs> It's tough being a franchise building, building a franchise and getting improving yearly and yearly. So we, I feel like sometimes we, we're fortunate enough to see one franchise do a miraculous thing, the OA Celtics. Yeah. We ain't never seen nothing like that again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, a, lot, a, lot go, a lot goes into yeah. it, man. And, and he's young, too. He's yeah, young. So this like, gonna be, yeah. I think this is going to be his third oh, year. He's so hot on the boy. All right. You know, the NFL, it's just like, especially if you're like the number one overall pick, they you want know. you, they want results ASAP. They expect everybody to be Peyton Manning. And Peyton Manning like, was 30, throwing 30 interceptions like, his first couple years. <laughs> yeah, so like, come on. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah, this <laughs> this day and age of sports, when you're like the number one pick, they kind of I mean, we live in try to rush the process. We live in a microwave society. They try to rush everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Army out there. Coming up with an interview. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Oh, I don't know if y'all saw this story. Did y'all see this story about um, Terrence Shannon Jr., the former Illinois guard? Yeah. Uh, not, gu not, not guilty. Not, not guilty. Yeah, man. Yeah, they, they, they now targeting athletes now. Yeah. Now it's like you better give people athletes the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Did you read the full details yeah, of, the, yeah. of, the, of the case? Yeah. And I don't know if you saw the full details of what happened. Mm. Um, no, nah, I mean, kind of, but not really. I think that stuck out. There's like the, the, the person that, you know, allegedly the, that was trying to sue him. 
she was texting somebody and yeah. saying in the text that got him yep, with got the money him. sign and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So it's kind of like, bro, that this dude was um. He he was considered like going to be a lottery pick. Yeah, I mean, he was killing last year. Yeah, and he might yeah. he might still get drafted, but he might not get drafted where he supposedly gets, was. I mean, based on the evidence, he yeah. should get drafted where he should get deserve to get drafted. Yeah. Like, that's not his fault. It's like yeah, he's like trying yeah, to mess up someone's life. And I get like one thing I don't like though, because some people somebody's high profile, you get to target them, but nothing happens to you, and he still might get. Somewhat penalized based on where he might go in the draft. You know, he didn't do nothing but right. make a wrong decision right. to hang around the wrong person. And then when yeah, he, said, he said he said he said he completely didn't even know that lady. He never seen her until the preliminary hearing. That was his first time ever seeing her. He said. And there was no. I that part. Oh yeah, there was no. There was like no survey. There was no videos. That lady of them. belongs in jail yeah. or psych ward. One yeah. or the other. Yeah, because even uh, in the bar, they said there was no surveillance of them even next to each other in the bar. Jail or the psych ward? Because you can't have people just making up stories. You don't even know them, man. Right. Never even met them. Yeah, that's so why. Yeah. That's scary. Scary. Lady. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah, that's per that's perjury in the court of law. Bro, like today. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stu Omni, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Can't escape that boy. Uh, we got a uh, <laughs> boxing update. Uh, go ahead, take it away. Frank, what's his name? <laughs> ghost. Yeah, Ghost. <laughs> cliche name, so cliche. He just wasn't good enough. Well, uh, before we get into that, uh, Todd. What's up? Oh, Benavides was killer. He's killer. Right, exactly. Uh, it was a great uh, card. Uh, Benavides went up in weight to 175. Um, he did his thing. Yeah. He didn't knock the guy out. I mean, he was a big 6'2". Um, his name is Vazic. Yeah, Vazic. Nah, Vazic, yo. Pro's pro. Pro's pro. Pro's pro. They didn't get knocked out, congratulated Benavides after the fight. Was like, but you could tell Benavides wasn't strong enough to do much to him, though. But he was, he was hitting him. But Benavides was the way he was hitting him, though. Like, was like, like he was like throwing hate makers, but like on target, though. Like hitting him as high as he could, bro. Dude was not budging. Tell off the tape there. I mean, uh, the guy was 37 years old. Yeah. Uh, Dude was not budging. Veteran. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Like, he was like, a big 6'2", you know, 175. But still, but I ain't jaw though. I ain't jaw. Look at him. See, I didn't know Benavides used to be like obese. I see why he got yeah. that power. He got fat boy power. He was a fat kid. Yeah. <laughs> he was like two seventies, two sixty something. So that's why he got that power. Right. Yep. He's about six and a half. So what's next? What's next for him? Uh, I mean, he's gonna wait uh, for uh, what's his name, uh, Bivol against uh, Better Biv. They will fight uh, sometime in October 12th, I believe, for the Undisputed Championship on 175. So we got to talk about Tank now? Yeah. Yeah, Frank just wasn't good enough. Tank warned him, told him, you know, go get some more experience under your belt. All he did was tire him out. And that fight went, that fight went as, about, as about people said it was. They said probably late in the fight. He's gonna get tired and Tank's gonna knock him out. I think that was like a consensus by everybody, and that's exactly what happened. But the worst thing about it is Frank's not even strong enough to really hurt Tank. He was like Tank walking down the whole entire fight. Yeah. Legit the whole like boom boom Frank hit him a couple times. He's like, bro, there ain't nothing. Walked him down the whole fight, bro. There's a headlights. <laughs> Tell on the team yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, I saw that my was you gotta put to sleep. I mean And Frank just got tired. All that jumping around, moving around. Yeah, he was a staying He got himself trapped in the ropes. But my whole point is, how do you get tired, though, at the oh, eighth? You should, you should be trained to fight this way. That's how you fight. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed you to go. Walk, um, I mean, you can't win a fight and walk him back like yeah. uh, Frank Martin did. But but how do you get fatigued, though, if that's how you fight? You know what I'm saying? Well, it's not easy, man. Uh, he was getting hit with some, you know, power uh, shots from Davis. Look at that. Yeah, I get all that, but but how you fight, how you fight. You can't just completely stop going from how what you do, though. You know what I'm saying? Like your body gonna be conditioned to jump around for 12 rounds. Yeah. Or actually jump around for 20 rounds if you're really gonna be conditioned for 12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that's all I was saying. Like he completely just stopped, and it's like, bro, you can't be that tired. And that's how you that's how you fight. Unless you was doing something that's not in your your realm. It's not really how you fight. Remember, it's easier said than done. I mean, uh, once you get in that ring, what I do like that, I mean. <laughs> 
I mean, but you also talking to guys that make sure they got to stay in shape to compete. So, like, I get what you're saying. Getting hit might do your legs a little bit, but if you get paid to get punched in the face, you already know how you're going to feel as you get punched in the face. Yeah. So you have to train and be in better condition. <laughs> Trevante, uh, Tech Davis is uh, definitely a superstar, man. Yeah. Now, now, he brought people up. But yeah, the way but, Tech fights, though, he's not going to, like, Sugar Ray you. Yeah. He's not going to finesse you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Frank should have been more prepared for that. Actually, uh, Frank, real quick, um, he won, like, the first four rounds. Yeah, because Tech gave him to him. <laughs> Oh, oh, like no, yeah, it was like that. He let, <laughs> bro, you watched the fight. Yeah, you watched the fight. <laughs> take, take, take was walking him down, got him in the corner, don't rent him haymakers. Like, not, like treat him like a little little brother. Yeah, they're saying they're saying like Shakur Stevenson won't be able to deal with Tank, and I was like, oh. we ain't got we ain't got over there talk crazy about Shakur. Shakur, yeah. Shakur, Shakur like Sugar Ray, got that type of slip ability. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But so we that that would be great because Tank is just pure power. At his, at his size. But can he take a punch from Tank uh, Shakur? Yeah. Take a punch? We'll see. Whenever they, well, whenever they make it happen. I mean, it's hard taking the uppercut from anybody. <laughs> so, uppercut is my favorite punch. <laughs> you, see what happened, you see what happened to Frank? <laughs> yeah, you see that. <laughs> uh, what other fights we got coming up, Pedro? Uh, next week, we got uh, Teofimo Lopez. Okay. He's going to fight this guy named uh, Steve Gladget, something like that. Nobody knows about yeah. These are the kind of fights that people don't want to see. Him. But to his credit, he's calling everyone out. I guess people don't want to fight him. Man, you got to get some views in the seats. You got to do something. The boxing world, I tell you. Boxing world, I tell you. I don't um, get it. Um, before we go to the, that's it for the boxing, Pedro. That's it. Um, before we go to highlights, Willie Mays just passed away. I heard. Yeah, yeah. I think he was the last, the oldest Hall of Famer that was still alive. Yeah. There were just some people, you know, shout out condolences. I just felt like there's some people who just been old forever. So you tell me somebody passed away, I'm kind of shocked. Like, they, I, they were I, still here. I'm not going to lie. I thought he passed away already. Yeah. I, I didn't know he was still alive. Nah, but shout out him living that long, you know. That's dope, though. Yeah. He's 93, I, right? Something like that. Yeah, because my Andre D, 92 years, 93 years. And also, all that, we didn't, talk to, we didn't talk about this, like, when it happened, but the MLB now is, like, Added uh, like all the stats from the Negro, the Negro League and stuff like that. So they added it to the yeah, MLB. So, so when they got white, added, white, pe white people are pissed. They, yeah, they no, was no. mad because a lot of their records aren't gonna look like, aren't gonna look too good compared to some of those other I guys. Mean, let's be real, it, 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 yeah. they're not that athletic <laughs> compared to a whole league of brothers. But when they gonna when they gonna bring Pete Rose back? <laughs> Sports bet is legal. Sports bet is legal. Pete Rose needs to be in the Hall of Fame. I, I don't think they're gonna, they're gonna bring him back. They, bro, we can wait till he dies to do that. They, they're not gonna bring him back. They've been trying. Yeah, they. I don't know. Well, That's, I feel like there's some other stuff or something that they're not telling us with Pete Rose. But yeah, they ain't. They ain't never going uh, You know what? I had a joke they they to myself. They ain't never gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> But um, um, yeah, that's that's what we got. Uh, let's, you know, we're coming to an end, so let's go to the Striners game highlights, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. Unless I forgot something, but I doubt it. I probably did.
back. We've come, we, we've come to the end of this program. Uh, you got anything you want to plug in? What's going on with you and other players and all that? Um, nah, again, for me, same old man, just grinding, man. Grinding, grinding, man. You seen you seen what J.J. pulled up in last night, man. It's our nice basketball all the way, man. So, you know, if anybody that got any problems in the Facebook groups, Dave Browns, anybody, holla at me, man. Talk to me. Talk to me. You should have been doing what you needed to do in the first place. Yeah, yeah, they got, they, they got to have comments, but you know they they, they mad they mad, they mad at me for having Todd in my uh all in my Lynn starting five <laughs> if I put a pickup team together. You know, yeah. yeah. Some men just no. some people just mad that, that that you know they've been they've been around for so long, but they're never in the conversation of anything, and that's how always yeah, that's how know, always kid, there's nothing you can do for a kid. That was like you know St. Mary's Division Four or whatever they are and all that. Like there's nothing there's nothing you can do for that kid. That kid want to play Division One ball. You can't help him. You ain't so never. help him go somewhere yeah. where he can get there. Yeah. And that's what's happening. So instead of being salty and all this female energy, everybody got female energy. All these grown adult men got female energy. They talk online and all this stuff is female energy, bro. Like I don't, you know, talk to me, all right? All right? I love that. This is, this is about this is about this is about the kid. Yeah, he gonna be better off. Always that's about the kids. And Always we got, about we the kids. More announcements and we got more announcements and any of your other kids that play good, I'm looking at them too. So deal with it. I want to talk to you about the new Vasi. Prince was the new Vasi basketball. Vasi high school basketball is JV basketball, yo. And anybody that think anything else is outdated. I try to tell everybody, everybody should experience prep school at some point in your life, at least one year, to open your eyes to the world, bro. A lot of people out here who haven't experienced, they have no idea what's out there. They have no idea. That's what I'm saying, yo. It's, it's, it's about development, man. You got, you got six coaches on the bench, yo. You ain't never worked the kid out in the summer. Hey, you only know you only know the kids from the from, the end of, from after things. If you only know them from the end of November to the beginning of March, yo. Because like, by it's now, about man, kids can't get better that way, yo. They can't reach their goals that way. Have as many rings as you do as coaches on your staff. By now, nice. concluding the show. But yeah, that's it for now. We got more announcements coming, man. And uh. The, oh yeah, and shout shout out to Brayson. Uh, I know we mentioned Brayson earlier, but Brayson Green he got in, he got invited to. Uh, he, well, he's he's like ranked third in the state now, and he got invited to like some Team USA thing. He's leaving Thursday to head over to uh, head over to Paris. He'll be over there by the time the Olympics are going on instead of doing some junior national USA thing, man. So shout out to him. He was playing in that game last night. I don't know if everybody know that. Team, you know. I'm not. Um, I'll talk to DJ later. Okay, but yeah, yeah. Shout out to Brace. He was he's definitely doing his things. So, hey man, shout out to all them kids out there. They're, yo, like I told you, them kids bringing that energy back, that competitive energy. I, I like to see. They was all going at each other and stuff like that. They didn't care if you had a. They didn't care. They was going at each other. End of the day, man. It's all about helping the next generation get out, and hopefully they can help the next generation get out. Yeah. And the next generation get out. Everybody's so worried about them all the time. Who cares about you? Worry about the kids, dude. Yeah. We gonna pull up to Lawrence for the. We gonna pull up for the Chico Summer in Lawrence too. Show y'all some love too. And you know them Lawrence folks, they be showing us love. So we gotta, gotta come out there and support them. Yeah, and stuff I like that. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go out there. I just, it's that drive. Um, yeah, they got Chico Summer. That already started. They going They they back at it this Friday. Um, P2P. Oh, yeah, I'm, pull up. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get down there and pull up to that too. I was down there last summer, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't drive out because I was on the show. I was I had I was down there for a short stay. But I'm gonna pull up to that too, man. I heard it's alright. Yeah, yeah, we gonna, we gonna me and Todd gonna pull up to that. Um, P2P, y'all definitely gonna see us July first. We gonna have Koki on sometime next week to talk about Ooh. P2P. Um, Richie got second part of the Boys and Girls Club summer uh, high school summer league. He got he's got to go coming back again. I think next week or the week after. That should be all year round. With more teams, so he's he's adding more teams to the second part. He told me he's gonna bring us some teams from Boston in that one and, and stuff like that. Um, CB got the thurs got Thursdays. Uh, with the, well, I think grades three to eight, he got that with the youth basketball CB. Got that going on every Thursdays. I believe they're at Tech every Thursdays or the Boys and Girls Club. Don't quote me, but check with him. But I believe they're at the Boys and Girls Club uh, every Thursdays. And um, what else we got? What else we got? Yeah, that's that's all I can promote. Um, they the one. They're gonna be on the field tomorrow. 
tomorrow morning or thir definitely Thursday tomorrow morning might be a little too early for the you know the young generation but definitely Thursday oh yeah we yeah 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 we back at Manning Field I mean, definitely Friday my bad definitely yeah, Friday yeah Friday no Friday yeah, Friday Friday we at Manning Field so all you all you guys that been hitting me up when y'all see me laying me know, look, wanting to know when the runs of the workouts at Manning are gonna start again we gonna be there Friday morning 8 30 or 9 o'clock one of those two bring water Get this work. It helped out a lot of kids from last year, so. Everybody's yeah. welcome. Every kid's yeah. welcome. Yes, sir. Pedro, any last words we got you before we get out of here? Enjoy the summer. Oh, yeah, yeah. School's out. Congratulations to everybody that graduated. My little, my oh, little yeah, lady out, graduated yesterday. Shout yeah, she did with grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She oh, happy belated to be birthday to your mom. Happy belated birthday to the my mother. Happy belated birthday to Iris Robinson. Happy belated birthday to my cousin Alton Bird. They all born the same day. <laughs> <laughs> happy belated to my little brother. He just turned 30. Uh, my cousins, they share a birthday tomorrow, actually. Okay, so okay, happy dope, birthday. Dope. Yeah, we out of here, man. Yeah, I'm going to shoot you a text. Yeah, I bet. Yeah.